So thank you, thank you for for joining. Um, welcome to uh, our webinar on uh, global HIV prevention scorecards dissemination. Um, during this webinar, we are going to be sharing with you updated uh, key findings from the uh, global HIV prevention scorecards. We will also share um, uh, some findings from a survey on implementing the ten points of the 2025 HIV prevention roadmap. Just some housekeeping uh, before handing it over to Dr. Fordham. As shown on this slide here, we are recording this webinar. You will receive the slides as well as the recordings after this webinar. Um, as we always do in this kind of webinars, let us all engage and let's have a very good uh, discussion. Also note that uh, we have got multiple languages. If you go on your Zoom window, you click that globe looking like icon, you can select a language of your preference. We've got English, French, Portuguese, and Spanish interpretations happening simultaneously as we go through the, the webinar. Um, yes, welcome and uh, good to see so many familiar faces. I'll hand over to Dr. Ford, who is the director of our um, science and studies for all department here at UNAIDS in Geneva to provide opening remarks. Over to you, Dr. Ford. Hi, Licious. I think Dr. Fode dropped off. Maybe he's having challenges. Okay. Um, while, he's, while he's joining, maybe we can give him one or two more minutes to, to join. While he's, uh, uh, Dr. Fode is joining, um, I would like to just encourage us to just, uh, let's pay attention maybe when we go through the scorecard data um, and let us know after the webinar if um, you find any discrepancy in the data or anything that you would like uh, to be adjusted or to be co collected. Just to highlight to you that um, these scorecards are based on the data that you report to UNAIDS every year. So we rely on the Global AIDS Monitoring Platform reporting. So the degree to which these scorecards are complete um, um, is, is linked to the degree to which our countries report uh, to, to UNAIDS through that GAM, uh, GAM process but feel free to engage the, the content and, and, and let us know if um, there are some data that you think are missing or some data that you think there is a, a discrepancy. We also do some triangulation with, with other program data that we receive directly from, uh, from partners. Um, Dr. Ford, are you there now? Yes, I'm there. Are you okay. hearing me? Yes, now we can hear you. Over to you. Okay, okay. thank you, Alicia. Sorry, colleagues and friends around the world. You know, I'm in a duty travel and as this happened often, the, the connection is not good. That's why I have not my camera. Just to say you that, uh, you know, really, really, really welcome. Uh, thank you all, all of you for joining us today. This webinar, you know, is, is all the opportunity to share with you the like update global HIV prevention scorecard tools and the 2025 roadmap survey finding like, what you thought about the, this 20, uh, 25 roadmap. It was a real pleasure, you know, to see that how many you have from all the parts of the world, you know, it, it demonstrates one more, if it's needed, that how committed you are. So we thought that this webinar is important because, you know, it will give you, it will help to introduce uh, the new uh, updated global HIV prevention scorecard tools. And that scorecards, you know, are making such a difference in terms of management prevention program at country level, uh, analyze globally, and quite frankly, also position the prevention in the global HIV response agenda, including at the political level. So it's really, really, really important to have that to see that the tools that we are build jointly are continue to progressing, you know, to make to make a difference. So the objective will be to give you, uh, at each of you, the 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 resource that support effective targeted HIV prevention efforts at national level, but increasingly which is, we know, difficult, but indispensable at subnational level, you know? 
So, uh, as I said, they will have an introduction of subnational scorecard concept, uh, which is uh, the development of subnational scorecard design to allow us to monitor and respond to the epidemic um, with even greater precision, you know, to which will lead to cost effectiveness. That that is really important. We will also share insight from a, the recent survey tracking country progress in implementing the 10 action roadmap. That roadmap will be shared pathway to accelerate progress to, toward HIV prevention. You all know it, you all work on it, and is making a, you know, as a really a difference to at even at the resource mobilization level where it was global fund, PEPFAR, national domestic fund. So that we will see the survey. And finally, we would like to see with you what are the technical assistance needed? How do we organize ourselves, ourselves being UNAIDS, but you also, to well identify and justify the TA and how do we, we, we yes, as we plan that TA to really support effective road uh, uh, prevention roadmap or prevention action plan implementation at country level. That is in a nutshell, colleagues, Licious, that I would like to say to again, thank you to be there. Uh, Licious and Clements and colleagues are going to take over me. Uh, the main purpose is to say thank you and uh, wishing all of us a, a good session and continue uh, our partnership. Over to you, Licious. Thank you so much for the um, thanks for those opening remarks and um, um, great job introducing the whole uh, layout of the of this uh, webinar session. So to to start, um, 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 as 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 Dr. Ford said, we are going to to have an overview of the scorecard's findings and then also an overview of uh, the results coming out of the survey that countries completed on their progress in implementing the ten actions of of the 2025 HIV prevention roadmap. Then um, we we'll also have um, um, another colleague who's going to share pulling from uh, what was coming out of this roadmap survey, where countries indicated what kind of support they need in terms of TA. And we'll use um, uh, uh, those results coming out of that survey on TA to discuss with you and hear from you um, um, what you think around technical, uh, technical assistance. So um, to begin with, um, I'd like to, to, to introduce um, the monitoring processes um, here for, uh, at the Global HIV Prevention um, a Coalition uh, with a focus on, on, on the coalition countries. Um, there are two, um, two ways that we, um, we, we do monitoring the survey, which we have been mentioning so far, and the scorecards that we also have been mentioning so far. But to, to begin, it's good to put these um, tools in context. What are the available tools and what are the different tools do I think it's an important overview for someone that is working on HIV prevention. This is what is shown on this slide here. It's showing um, national HIV prevention program review tools and how those different tools or analytical tools fit together. You may choose to read this slide um, anywhere you want from the top to bottom or bottom to top. But what's important, I think, is to pay attention to the classifications on the left side of this slide. So we have tools that you can use for overview and synthesis. These are the global HIV prevention um, as scorecards. And then we've got tools that you can use to analyze progress along the different results chains, providing an inequities um, a lens. As you know, the global AIDS strategy provide an inequalities lens. So we've got tools focusing on stewardship, policies, outputs, outcomes, and, and impact as indicated on this, on this slide here. Then we've got tools that you can use for estimating prevention needs. And these tools are highlighted here for the different um, HIV prevention pillars as laid out in the HIV prevention uh, roadmap. Then we've got tools that you can use for granular program analysis. Um, here we've got the famous um, uh, PSATs, or for those who have not heard about the PSATs, these are the prevention self-assessment tools that helps you to do a granular program um, analysis. We've got a PSAT for key populations, PSAT for adolescent girls and young women, PSAT for boys and men, including VMMC, PSAT for condoms, PSAT for ARV-based uh, prevention. Then there are these other tools that uh, cut across, if you want to do cross-cutting analytics, for example, the prevention um, cascade analysis or qualitative audits of new infections as well as program evaluations. All these tools put together, they really help in terms of 
uh, planning your prevention programs, setting epidemiologically meaningful uh, targets, monitoring, and um, help to, to stimulate discussions as you conduct your um, regular uh, program reviews uh, as a prevention technical working group in countries. The ones that we wanna to focus today is highlighted earlier on is the scorecard two and the roadmap um, a survey. Shown here, the scorecard two does a lot of quantitative. It also has got qualitative data that we pull from our policies, um, our database called the NCPI, but also a lot of um, quantitative data that countries report to the Global AIDS Monitoring Platform, um, as well as data that we pull from the DHS surveys, as well as program data that we triangulate from different partners like PEFA, the Global Fund, um, et cetera. Um, so the results you are going to be hearing are going to be uh, touching on these two uh, two tools. And then the survey is lined, is always aligned to the 2025 10 actions um, 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 uh, that are highlighted in, the, in that in the questions in the survey are structured such that they assess countries' progress in implementing those um, 10 actions. I'll just um, um, walk through what these tools look like, and then I'll hand over to my colleague Clemens, who is going to give you uh, a snapshot or an, anal or an overview of the results coming out of the first two, which is the scorecard two. So this scorecard two is basically a tool that we developed to synthesize prevention data from different sources into a meaningful HIV prevention programming um, uh, dashboard. So you see different um, visuals um, in these two, all pulling data from different sources to put them in one place. Technically, the scorecard two, although we are discussing here, uh, focusing um, 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 uh, on, on GPC countries or global HIV prevention coalition countries, the scorecard two is technically available to all countries that report to UNAIDS. So if you go into this tool, which is basically an Excel tool, you can select a country and then it populates the analytics and visuals uh, for that country as long as that country is reporting to UNAIDS um, a GAM um, a platform. So as I highlighted at the beginning when we we're waiting for the opening remarks, the degree to which these scorecards and the posters or visuals in these two are complete is dependent on how complete also the country is reporting uh, to GAM. It's good also to give some rationale of these HIV prevention scorecards to understand what are they meant to do and what they are not meant to do? This slide or the, this slide with this on, on this table is showing um, what are those. So first of all, the scorecard two is uh, meant to summarize existing data. So we pull data from different sources. And then it is not meant to create new reporting uh, process. So we pull data already reported uh, to GAM and we use that data to synthesize it into meaningful visualization for HIV prevention. The tool also is meant to provide an orientation and be an entry point for comparison. So you find that countries are grouped by regions, by economic regions. There are also uh, country put side by side for the different visuals and different analytics. This helps to compare how you are doing in different areas to your neighbor. And that can also help to stimulate South to South learning. Um, however, this kind of approach is not meant to ignore the difference in the context in different countries, even though we are using the same um, analytics or to standardize and to allow for comparison. It is also meant as I highlighted just now to stimulate learning from high performing programs. So for example, if you're not doing very well in, on PrEP, you may want to look at your neighbor who is doing very well on that program to see what is it that they're doing more that you can also uh, do so that you can make um, adjustments. This is not meant to compare and pass final judgments uh, because context also matters in why there could be differences in countries. This is also help to encourage digging deeper into your HIV prevention programs, looking at other issues like supply, demand, structural issues, as well as um, even at the granular level, at the subnational level. And it is not meant to be an end in itself. So this is not like the ultimate as far as HIV prevention analytics is concerned. The two can also be used in conjunction or together with other tools that you might have um, at country level. However, when you do the program reviews, we think that the two can help you to uh, to do that. When you open the Excel file, this is how it is structured and this is how the different elements are arranged. We have got visuals arranged for mixed epidemic countries and visuals um, that are arranged for concentrated epidemic countries. You will find a scorecard uh, for each country for mixed epidemic as well as for concentrated epidemics and also a poster um, for the two different epidemics. And then we've got a bigger picture summary 
um, uh, for mixed epidemics and, and also for quantitative epidemics. And then pillar specific summary is looking at the five prevention pillars in line with the 2025 HIV prevention roadmap. Here we've got condoms, um, young women and more partners, VMMC, or men and boys, keep up populations, RV based um, uh, uh, or PrEP. Um, the concept of the subnational are two. It follows a similar structure with um, the global scorecard two, which I just highlighted the, the previous slide. With the scorecard two, basically you're trying to ensure that it provides localized data to check, assess, and improve HIV prevention efforts at the regional, um, subnational, or community level. So here we are looking at granularity, looking at actionable data, and also helping to engage at the local level. It's, it builds up to the um, our national level. It really helps you in terms of informing your HIV prevention programs. I'm just showing here a snapshot of how it looks like for a country like Zimbabwe, for example. Instead of, of selecting a country in the global two for subnational tools, when you click um, at the list of location, you can select a province level or regional level. You can go further down to district level, uh, whichever nomenclature that you use um, in the country. So this is how it, the, the scorecard looks like in terms of the visuals that are there showing here is the one for Zimbabwe, for example, um, arranged into output. Those are coverage indicators, um, outcome that is service use or behavior, and then impact um, uh, indicators um, in those um, uh, three columns. If you look in the output, it also arranges according to the different HIV prevention pillars. This could be condoms, PrEP, key populations by the different key population categories, adolescent girls and young women. And then outcome service are also different indicators shown there. And the impact is usually the infections, HIV infections trend from 2010 up to the latest year. Now it is up to 2023, which are the last um, estimates. The poster, this is an example shown for Diara Congo, um, also arranged in a way that is easy to read and easy for you to be able to have a quick snapshot and, and an idea of how HIV prevention is going uh, in the country. So we have got the new infections charts. We have got HIV prevalence by age and population. Also have got policy and structural barrier summaries. Um, we also have got the 10 roadmap actions overview. So the summary of the findings of the roadmap um, survey are also included in this um, a visual. We also have got program coverage for adolescent girls and young women, SRHR linkages, indicators, overview of the five prevention pillars. We also included here to bridge this pre uh, treatment as prevention. Also have got the vertical transmission staked bar analysis included in this visual here. So it helps uh, for a prevention technical group to have everything in one place in a way that is easy to visualize and to see if there could be potential gaps uh, somewhere. I'll end here and then I'll hand over to my colleague Clemens is going to provide you an overview of what is coming out of the updated scorecards. And then when it's done, I'll come back and I'll also give you an overview of what is coming out of the roadmap survey. And then after that, my colleague, again, Heather Murray, will also take us through what countries were indicating in terms of TA in the roadmap survey. So over to you, Clemens. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lysias. And let me start actually with a big thank you because what we are analyzing here and what Lysias has actually, together with our two consultants, uh, Godfrey Musuka and Dindu and Jingombe, also big thank you to them. You know, pull together is ultimately, as Lisa has already mentioned, your data, and it's it's with you and the country teams, the M and E, and the prevention teams really pull pull together is what you um, what you see in our in our scorecard summary presentations. So, um, what I'll be doing here is a high level summary of the main um, of the main findings, um, and um, it is, in a way, um, not 100% different, of course, to what we shared in previous presentations on global prevention scorecard findings. But there are a couple of new trends emerging or trends becoming stronger, or in some cases weaker. And I'll also try for those who have been part of previous webinars to highlight a couple of those new things. Um, so... Just to summarize... Just to summarize you, the, the success that we want to see, of course, is relation to is related to the 2025 20, um, prevention um, 
targets, and there we have actually an ultimate goal to reduce new HIV infections by 80%. And what this slide shows is that globally we are not on track. We have three times more new HIV infections, um, just to remind you. And the second slide that you might have seen from the global report, but just to make provide the overall context is we have seen substantial progress in Eastern Southern Africa and Western Central Africa in terms of reducing new HIV infections by more than 50%. But we have not seen, and uh, those are the um, bars here in red, in the other regions, substantial reductions. So we still have more than 600,000 new HIV infections in the other regions, and that hasn't changed in the last 13 years. So we have great variation in progress. You might have seen those two slides before on the overall trends, um, but here it's, we start with the more specific findings in relation to the Global Prevention Coalition scorecards. Um, and we look here at new HIV infections in, in GPC focused countries and other countries with available data. And what we see is a 41% reduction overall in the GPC focused countries and only 6% reduction in new HIV infections. Um, in the other countries. Um, and that difference is there for all the populations, um, smaller for children and uh, children and young people. So it's most pronounced actually in the in the young people and adult um, populations. We can, of course, not attribute that to the Global Prevention Coalition or a country being member of the coalition, but it shows that collectively, as all partners in the AIDS response, the countries that were previously the fast track countries, now a global prevention coalition countries that put a lot of effort in their HIV responses are clearly making um, the greatest progress. Um, and of course, many of them are in Sub-Saharan Africa, so there's also an overlap between the uh, two trends that I showed um, here before. Um, we see large variation of progress in, in countries. You have seen this slide before. There's about eight focus countries that have achieved at least 66% reduction. And that is roughly an indication for being on track for achieving an 80% reduction by um, 2025. But we also see um, trends you know, that are stagnating in some countries or, or declining only slowly. And we see a number of countries with rapidly rising new HIV infections, an up to 600% increase um, since 2010. So, so we really have all types of different scenarios. And that shows that you know, we have um, a lot of work to do in prevention um, to, in, in, in all those countries actually to achieve the targets. If you, even if you're on track, if you stop now, you will not achieve them. But also we have a number of prevention um, context where we need to really turn around um, the, the trends in terms of incidence reduction. The detailed findings now for the scorecards are clustered along the five pillars of prevention. I will not introduce, use them, but maybe just in very broad terms, what do, did, did we find um, in terms of the five pillars, in terms of an overview? For key populations, we see we have about a third, less than a third, to about half of the people reached for different populations. From everything we know, this is increasing slowly. So it is increasing, but it's not consistently increasing. And we see, for example, for gay men and other men who have sex with men, you know, a really persistent, persistent gap and, and, and really also not substantial increases. We see for dollars in girls and young women in the settings with high HIV incidence and uh, an increase here. Um, then we see in condom use and male circumcision declines actually. So that's the bad bad news. Um, we have a decreasing a decreasing trend if we look at annual numbers um, over the past six years. Um, and um, if we look at the um, um, AIV-based uh, prevention and treatment coverage, of course, that is increasing for, for HIV treatment, globally at 77% now, rapidly increasing for PrEP. One million more users compared to 2022 when we last reported, 3.5 million now. But that's very far from the um, 21 million target that we have here. Um, and then if you break this down into all the countries, so... You know, this is just a teaser. You can look at your country then in more detail with the detailed scorecards that Lysias has 
as shown available for all countries. But in the big picture, what we see is in all pillars and all epidemic contexts, we have good examples, countries or specific program components being in the green. Um, but what we see, we also have a lot of gaps across the board and probably not a single country that has achieved all the targets and is doing well in all the um, different pillars and area. What we see is where we have good progress in incidence reduction, we usually have good progress in HIV treatment and at least some components, some pillars of primary prevention. Now, briefly on the uh, pillars, and we can't look at all countries, of course, and all, 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 all specific indicators, but what we see for key populations now in mixed epidemics, that's primarily sub-Saharan Africa, but also contexts like Papua New, New, New Guinea, where you have higher higher incidence um, than in other parts of the, the Asia region in the general population. So you see here for, for, but for key populations here, we see in those mixed epidemics um, that we have a lot of gaps in, in, in data and we have um, you know, some good examples, particularly in, or slightly more for sex worker settings where we have some countries with high coverage, but overall we have really still a major gap in terms of the scale of prevention yeah. programs um, and really having even the data available for the different key populations. If we look at the more concentrated epidemics, so that's countries outside Sub-Saharan Africa, um, now we see we have slightly more data available, um, but we have a, a similar pattern in terms of programs, majority of countries with scale and coverage gaps looking again slightly better for sex workers, but um, even in those countries where, you know, gay men and other men who have sex with men in many settings account for the largest number of new infections outside sub-Saharan Africa, in, in, even in, in the population of gay men and other men who have sex with men, we have very low coverage um, of prevention in the majority of settings. And that those are, of course, you know, really defining gaps that will determine um, in these epidemics that primarily affect key populations um, um, what the future cause of the of the trends will be. Um, Quickly here, we're presenting this in a, in a slightly different format here because some of the scorecards are small prints. Specifically for safe injecting equipment, we see again an indicator that is achievable. Our benchmark here is 95% use of safe injecting equipment or fewer than 5% um, not using it. Um, and we see only four countries globally have achieved achieve that. For key populations in terms of structural barriers, we see that prevention packages for key populations are now in place in a majority of countries, but they're in part still incomplete, and we have a um, um, substantial gap here in terms of data for, for stigma in healthcare settings, and at the same time, um, criminalization of key populations is persisting. Um, and here again, we have the same outside sub-Saharan Africa. It's um, a similar picture. Uh, picture. We have actually more packages in place for all key populations, but also still um, substantial gaps in stigma data. Um, criminalization is you know, slightly lower for, for gay men and other men who have sex with men, but also persists in particular for sex work and for drug use. Adolescent girls and young women, we see um, substantial declines in HIV incidence in some countries that trends are broadly aligned often to the um, adult trends in terms of reducing new HIV infections for young women. We have eight countries with declines more than, um, more than two thirds, so similar for the adults. We have four countries with stagnating or rising trends um, here to the right. Um, and of course, um, here we, we we have you know epidemic contexts that are mixed, but we still have you know population um, um, general population transmission among adolescent girls and young women in those countries that contribute to this to this increasing trends um, that we observe here. Now, in terms of some of the behavioral and and condom use indicators, we see even greater variation in countries. But the worrying trend here, headline finding, is that we see declines in condom use among young women and young men as well. Um, clearly here we see you know, young women even lagging further behind in some of the indicators, particularly in terms of reporting having access 
um, to condoms. And that's, of course, a, 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 a concerning trend. On the positive side, in those relatively fewer or smaller set settings with high HIV incidence um, among young women, that's primarily in Eastern Southern Africa or most mostly even in Southern Africa, there we see increasing um, coverage of programs for adolescent girls and young women. That's now 50% um, compared to um, compared to less than 40% when the co coalition started, in, in part due to you know, the PEPFAR and the Global Fund investments. But we have a lot of lack of data on program coverage for young women outside those districts um, and settings. Um, we have here, um, actually, um, the structural barriers for dollars and girls and young women, you see continued great variation in access to secondary education, which particularly you know, relevant for the younger uh, groups, uh, adolescent, adolescent girls. We have CSE policies in place, but substantial implementation gaps still. And um, also a mixed picture on, on the age of access um, uh, for for prevention, and that is actually um, that is actually um, particularly relevant in those settings where um, anybody below the age of eighteen and that six countries um, still cannot access um, without parental um, um, consent. So so that is particularly relevant because between seventeen and eighteen, a lot of young women are already sexually active, and we already have HIV incidents. Um, now. In terms of condom use, I mentioned it already before for young women. It's also true for women overall. It's also true um, for um, adult men that we have uh, men that we have reductions in condom use in those countries that have done a survey in recent years. It doesn't mean that it's not happening in other countries, but our concern is that at least in those countries where we have recent data, we see fairly consistently such trends. And, and just to mention, so we saw it in Ethiopia, we saw it in Kenya, we saw it in Tanzania, we saw it in um, Uganda and Zambia and East, in Eastern and Southern Africa, but also in Western Central Africa in a number of countries. Um, interestingly, it's not necessarily all countries with the same, 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 same trends. So it's not a given that this is supposed to happen, but it's happening in several in several countries, and you may have seen this in the global report, it's associated with the declining investments and distribution in um, of condoms, and yeah, also social marketing declined um, by half. So clearly, an area that needs additional investment, and you know, the global fund and partners are working on it. The good news is we have more condom investments through the global fund now. Um, that is starting to address that. But of course, that will take years to translate into actual use data from surveys. Um, in, in addition, maybe on male circumcision, we see, I mean, we have reached a very impressive number. So more and more men are actually accessing this survey. So it's almost 38 million up to the end of 2023. So definitely impressive progress on this, you know, I think a unique, uh, you know, public health intervention and initiative, but you also see um, the declining annual numbers in the context also of, of some funding shortage, uh, some funding shortages um, that that have occurred. So um, still large gaps in particularly in those settings with highest incidence in sub-Saharan Africa, in Southern, and particularly in Southern Africa, of course. Um, now in terms of PrEP, um, the last pillar here to look at, we see um, quite remarkable increases overall globally, um, but with very great variation, the largest increases against, you know, the global targets, if they're broken down into regional targets, we see in Eastern Southern Africa. Um, but the worrying trend, of course, is that in the other regions, we have made at really population level virtually no significant targets, uh, no progress on the targets. So, of course, all regions need to need to um, continue work towards targets, but we really need sort of a major shift in focus in the countries and regions, um, particularly in the context of key population um, epidemics, where we have you know very large 
gaps, for example, Asia Pacific, Latin America, Eastern Europe, Middle East, and North Africa. Um, and some countries are actually getting closer to the levels of PrEP coverage that are implied in the global, in the global targets. Um, so, you, you know, we have about 1.3 million new infections and globally, and we have about 21 million um, people in needing PrEP according to the global targets. And if we sort of cross, cross tabulate that, you know, we, we see that it's actually only Kenya at the moment that is exceeding the level of PrEP use that is suggested in global targets. So um, achieved in Kenya um, in terms of at least the use of PrEP um, once in the past 12 months, that's what we're talking about here. Um, but we see um, a lot of countries um, um, below that. Still greater progress in green here in Sub-Saharan Africa, Eastern Southern Africa in particular, but also good examples outside that region. For example, you see Vietnam here, but the norm outside Sub-Saharan Africa, as you see in the previous slide, most countries are still way beyond below the levels of PrEP coverage um, needed. So in summary, um, from these um, scorecards um, on the high priority pillars and the related um, enablers, we see um, in four pillars actually quite positive signs um, of um, increasing um, um, you know, prevention benefits overall, um, but major gaps in all in many countries. So we have more areas with high HIV incidence that have programs for young women. We have small increases in coverage of programs with key populations, maybe more for sex workers than for others, pretty stagnating for gay men and men who have sex with men, for example. An additional 20 million men accessed VMMC since the onset of the GPC, positive news, but the annual trends are you know, not so positive in terms of going down. Rapid increases in the number of people using PrEP, but you know, a long, long way to go. Um, and condom distribution and use continues to decline in several countries, not all with recent data. So we need to really you know, have a new renewed focus on this um, so we don't have fewer users of prevention, particularly because condoms are such a widely used um, method. Now, just one word, um, even though it doesn't belong here, I think, um, of course, the main news in prevention and we're using all opportunities on prevention is on long-acting um, um, injectable PrEP and in future iterations of scorecards, we will of course also need to think about um, think about those. Um, but it is really, you know, in terms of the future of tracking prevention, you know, tracking access to you know specific options, tracking um, you know the need, estimating the need for different prevention options, including those long acting options, and then tracking progress against them, will be sort of a future element of scorecard approaches. Um, and of course, they are not yet available in country, but as they become available, it will be important to inc you know, increase the attention to those specific new modalities and new, new, new technologies as well. Um, so finally, we are at the moment of opportunity um, for prevention. There is new tools, there is uh, good examples. Um, and I think if we take you know, these scorecards, which we have been doing since 2017, and take the lessons of those six years in terms of progress made, we have you know, made progress in many things, but we have also had quite some you know, um, gaps or even going backwards on condoms. And in, in, in total, we might not have necessarily many more uses of prevention now than, than a few years ago. And that's because you know, some things have increased and others have declined. So I think looking into the future for prevention, a key lesson from these analyses is we need to really um, move the prevention options um, simultaneously and you know, have more prevention uses, more people having access and the ability to use um, prevention options, achieving our 95% target in, in terms of reaching people in need of prevention and ultimately the 80% new infection target. So I'll end here. Thanks so much. Um, back to you, Lysias. Thank you so much, um, Clemens. Um, so we, we have um, um, uh, provided an overview of 
the data coming out of the scorecard too. Um, and now um, I'll provide an overview of the data coming out of the roadmap survey um, and my colleague Heather Marie will do the same as well. Huh? You are we in the same meeting now? Okay. So to put the data from the roadmap survey in context, it's good to to link it to what that roadmap is and and how that survey is is structured. So if we may recall, those who have had the opportunity to look at this document, the 2025 HIV prevention roadmap, it has got a 10 point action plan where there are 10 key points that were um, 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 uh, outlined there um, that during the development of that roadmap, they are thought to really help uh, countries be on, on track if they are to have those uh, 10 actions in place and making progress on those 10 actions. Uh, and these 10 actions speak to um, a data-driven um, assessment of, of prevention program needs and barriers uh, 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 doing or having a precision prevention approach um, aligned to the 2025 targets, uh, defining country investment needs for HIV prevention, um, having our strengthened HIV prevention leadership entities, uh, and also expanding HIV prevention services through community-led um, uh, services, um, ensuring that uh, social and legal barriers are removed that could hinder um, uh, prevention services. Also promoting integration, especially in this um, a time of sustainability discussions, ensuring that um, HIV prevention um, uh, services are integrated into other essential and related uh, services to improve HIV outcomes. Then also embracing uh, by instituting mechanisms for rapid introduction of new technologies. Uh, Clemens just highlighted the excitement around um, long acting uh, prep. Um, and then uh, the last two um, to do with um, real time prevention program monitoring for us to know where we are good to have um, um, real time monitoring systems in place uh, that are able to track what we need to track and then ensuring that we've got an accountability mechanism in, in place to take each and every actor um, uh, in the HIV prevention response accountable. So the roadmap survey basically um, um, is based on these 10 actions and it provides a, a systematic way to assess where countries are at in terms of implementing these um, actions. Um, and this is uh, really key to then track over time where gaps could be, maybe those gaps could be translating to uh, the gaps that we see when we look at the scorecard. Uh, to How it is conducted, um, 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 this is also, I think, very helpful information for, um, uh, for everyone to be aware of. So um, the survey was shared with 38 GPC countries. Um, and the recipients of this survey, it included UNAIDS country directors, uh, um, UNAIDS HIV prevention focal points, UNFPA uh, country representatives, which are the equivalent of the um, country directors, and UNFPA prevention focal points. This is because UNFPA, as you may recall, they are also the uh, co-convener of the GPC. Then it was also shared at the same time with the National AIDS Commission directors or the director generals of the national AIDS councils in the countries and their respective HIV prevention focus. Also, um, HIV prevention um, um, uh, focus from the Ministry of, of Health as well, working uh, closely with uh, with the national AIDS commissions as well as uh, our RST um, our regional teams and their prevention uh, focal points. The idea of having a process like this was to make sure that under the leadership of the prevention leadership entity in, in country, uh, the prevention technical group will come together and provide the responses to the questions of this survey and agree on a response that is verified by government and submitted to the GPC secretariat for, uh, for um, um, how that analysis is um, uh, is done. So, so for this survey, we out of the 38 countries, 33 managed to provide complete response and the analysis is based on these uh, 33 countries. Um, the analysis that I'll show, the results that I'll show would be in the form of a heat map, mainly that's the main um, result. Of course, we can go into specific details for each of the questions in terms of counting countries, how many said what, but it's good to understand the heat map by um, having an understanding of how the scoring was done. So um, this is an example from question, um, uh, the, the roadmap action point two, and the questions that were asked pertaining to this um, roadmap action point. So um, to unpack where the 
gap exactly is um, um, elements that should be in place in order to accomplish this action um, uh, point uh, or indicated here. So a roadmap action component being uh, says here, for example, action point two says adopt a prison prevention approach uh, to develop national HIV prevention goals that are aligned to the 2025 uh, global targets. Um, the sub questions there, first of all, there should be a roadmap or a strategy in place um, and aligned to that strategy, uh, there should be a prevention target set, even granular, and also translating those targets into sub-national targets uh, for a granular look into um, 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 our efforts to be achieved towards 2025 targets, and also developing differentiated prevention packages. This then helps in terms of identifying the correct interventions to meet the targets being set above. And then for adolescent girls and young women in relevant countries, um, ensuring that packages for GYW where relevant are developed. And for the implementation of this to happen, ensuring that standard operating procedures or implementation guides are in place for the different pillars. And each Julie, of... maybe quickly, slides are not showing at the moment for, for, for some users. Um, I think it was very clear. No need to repeat. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me go straight to the... Can you see the slides now? Not now. No, not not. Okay. I can't see them yet. Um, I'm not sure about share. others. It was very clear even without slides, but I think now as we get to the findings, we might okay, need let, them. Let me reshare. Just a second. Okay, it should be okay now. Yes, they're visible now, thank you. Thanks. So quickly to go into the results. So what's shown on these slides are the results of the first baseline survey, the one labeled 2023, which is on my left side. And then on my right-hand side, are the results that came from the recent survey, the 2024 one. Um, we can see when, when we looked at the 2023 um, 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 baseline results, um, we had mixed um, um, uh, progress across different elements of the 10 actions. Uh, the first column is highlighting what were those um, are 10 actions. The first panel is showing the summarized results, one to 10, that is for each of the roadmap action point. And then the bottom panel is showing um, under each roadmap action item, there are several components that were um, analyzed and, and assessed and scored differently as I highlighted in the previous um, uh, previous slide. We can see where there are greens. Green, it means uh, that action point or that element has been done or is in place. Um, where it is red, it shows that it has not been done yet. And then um, a, a, a range of, of orange, yellow is, is indicating that that um, um, action point or roadmap action item is in progress or is in development, and it's not yet complete, but it is. Um, it has uh, started. Um, we can if it's very hard because it has been one year now since 23 to 24 uh, when these two surveys um, have been conducted. But there are some clear um, 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 uh, um, indications of progress that we can see here, especially in that highlighted area. If we just try to see which panel has got more greens. The right panel 2024 has got more greens, meaning that something happened after the baseline survey was uh, was conducted. Um, also, even in the other areas, um, it is there in as much as it is very um, a slight improvements, but when you really do the counting individually for each of the components, you realize that there've been improvements um, uh, from the setting of the baseline survey uh, and when the follow-up survey was, uh, was conducted. In terms of what these results mean, um, if you look at the, the right panel, uh, it is clear where the gaps are. For example, where there's yellow and more red, um, if you are looking at the summary, summary panel, the top one, we can see that around social and legal barriers, that's where the challenge is. Also around integration with the related services, uh, that's where um, also the challenge is. 
um, when it comes to real time real time program monitoring and accountability uh, for HIV uh, progress tracking, that's where also the challenge is. Otherwise, it looks like when it comes to invest uh, defining investment needs and uh, adopting a precision prevention approach. Um, um, looks like there's been um, improvement and a lot of engagement in countries um, around that. Um, also, when it comes to setting targets, um, um, uh, defining packages, it looks like there's been um, improvement a lot around that. When you look at the bottom of the highlighted area, there you see um, a challenge even when you look at the granular results that are shown in the bottom panel. Um, there are gaps when it comes to um, having accountability mechanisms in place when it comes to um, conducting program reviews and also making sure that there's real-time program monitoring systems in, in place to be able to track, um, to track progress. Another way to visualize these results in a very summarized uh, way is through this uh, bar chart. Basically, this bar chart is showing the number of countries that are saying we have completed this roadmap action item and those that are saying we are still doing it and those that indicated that they have not done it and they did not indicate that it is being done. You can see if you read this chart from the left to right. So the taller the green bars, it means those roadmap action items, um, they're doing very well. Where we have got more red and um, those yellow um, 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 uh, brown bars, it means that uh, there is a gap there. So is shown in the detailed slide uh, that I showed um, earlier on. The first three um, action points from the roadmap, data-driven needs assessment, precision prevention approach, defining investment needs. It looks like countries are doing something. Something's happening around those um, 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 uh, points from the roadmap. Then when it comes to strengthening of prevention leadership, it, it shows that it's, it's happening. It's in progress. It's working progress. I guess maybe countries there, uh, they're being hard on themselves in terms of what they aspire um, to do um, in terms of leading HIV prevention efforts in their countries and what is currently uh, happening. Also expanding through community-led services, um, a challenge there, be it a sub or setting up um, social contracting mechanisms, ensuring that uh, there are no laws or policies that hinder community-led organizations to receive money to offer prevention services. Um, I think those kind of things shows that there's um, a lot um, um, that can be done. Then removing social and legal barriers, a key challenge that we all know, and it also translates to the gaps that we see in the scorecards around progress on key populations programs, for example. Then integration, we can see a lot of discussions happening. I guess now because of these sustainability discussions, uh, we see um, countries um, um, are initiating um, integration related um, our discussions, but still quite a handful of countries where this has not um, happened. Then introducing new technologies, maybe through exciting results that also Clement highlighted earlier on around long acting. We can see a number of countries are really excited in instituting uh, mechanisms to rapidly um, um, adopt uh, and, and, and use new technologies in prevention. Uh, but also another handful of countries where this is in progress could be making sure that uh, regulatory approvals are in place first before uh, this could happen, or bit virtual platforms, make sure that uh, they are good uh, set up to be able to offer um, uh, those. Then the gap is highlighted earlier on is around the real-time program monitoring and accountability uh, for HIV progress uh, tracking. This is where um, uh, the gaps are with only a few countries indicating that they are okay when it comes to those um, two roadmap action uh, points. Um, um, and uh, most of the countries indicating that it's a, still um, a gap. And one of the um, 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 aspects also um, um, around uh, discussing HIV prevention, uh, especially funding needs, um, is to um, conduct financial dialogues with the relevant stakeholders. Um, as an example of an analysis that could be done around this specific question and could be done also for other um, 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 uh, questions, which we share the detailed analysis when we share recordings and, and the scorecard and these results of, of the survey is um, um, a, this word cloud that is showing um, what countries are saying in terms of engagement of different sectors in countries when it comes to HIV prevention funding. Um, the question was asking, is a funding dialogue been conducted in countries in the past 12 months? And who was involved in that funding dialogue? We can see a very multi-sector, uh, multi-partner engagement here around HIV prevention funding. 
with the Ministry of Health, the Global Fund, Civil Society, very encouraging to see PEF Financial Aids Commissions and Ministry of Finance and Treasury being key, key as well as UN agencies um, in these discussions. The bigger the, the, the size of, 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 of the way it shows that many countries are mentioning that, um, um, <clears throat> that partner. And then shown in the bar chart, there is just a number of countries of the same, same data. So that's all um, uh, from the roadmap survey. We'll share more details when we share the recordings of this in terms of what was the analysis for specific uh, questions in the roadmap survey. But in terms of the overall results, um, is that heat map and, and the bar chart, which I've just um, um, shared now. I'll hand over to my colleague, Heather Murray, to share with us what was coming out in the survey when it comes to questions around uh, technical assistance. And then after that, we can go through a Q&A session. Over to you, Heather Murray. We can't hear you, Heather Marie. Can still, still, we can't, we can't hear. Okay. Apologies about that. Yes. I'm yes. just having some trouble. Now we can hear you now. And okay, so you should be able to see my slides now. Yes, thank you. Fantastic. Okay, so as Alicia said, I am providing an overview of the technical assistance needs that were identified through the survey. And so before I start, I want to say a huge thank you and acknowledgement of my colleague, Alicia Zembe, who really did the heavy lifting for analyzing the scorecard data, including the data that I'm presenting here, and also echoing um, Clemens and Alicia in thanking the country teams for supplying this data. So within the survey, there was a relatively short question on technical assistance needs, and this this provided um, the country level or country identified critical support needs across technical areas that are essential for strengthening HIV prevention efforts. As you heard from Lysias, the data is from 33 countries, and this has been amalgamated into this quite busy but um, really helpful graph. And just to contextualize, countries were able to select any number of technical assistance areas and any number of modes of technical assistance types for each of these areas. So what this means is that some countries selected only a few options, maybe not all of the different technical areas. Other countries selected multiple. Um, and so this really does divert reflect the diversity of countries within the DPC, but also the diversity of needs um, within this group of, of countries. And you can see here, and I will do a little bit of a summary, but you can see very clearly that trainings and workshops were very popular. The development of a comprehensive data analysis plan for HIV prevention um, was also something that was strongly sought after, capacity building of community organizations and translating national HIV prevention scorecards into subnational scorecards all really came out very strongly. And this won't be a surprise based on what Lisi has had presented. Um, the other one that probably came out, some of the most strong, was around the formulation and execution of sustainable financing plans for HIV prevention. We know that globally, this is now quite a priority, given that we're almost in 2025 and really accelerating towards 2030. And so that includes the budget planning and allocation for HIV prevention. Now, this is just the same data presented differently and the darker color represents more countries selecting this option. Um, 
So in what I'm going to focus on now is actually just some of these conclusions. So there is, as I mentioned, a high demand for training workshops. Um, this was consistently the most requested form of technical assistance across multiple categories, and it reflects a strong need for skills building and knowledge transfer at all levels. And so something to really bear in mind when we're creating technical assistance requests and also when we're pitching and responding to them. Um, significant need in data analysis and target setting. High levels of demand were observed for assistance in developing those comprehensive data analysis plans and really setting epidemiologically meaningful targets for key and priority populations. And this includes for PrEP, um, indicating a focus on strengthening those data-driven HIV prevention strategies. There are a number of tools that are out there now that exist. Um, some of those were mentioned by Lucius within that in, um, introductory section but many of these have been underutilized by countries and there is a growing, I think, acknowledgement of the need to really utilize these tools and, and also to reutilize them because having um, done target setting for, for prep or for something else um, a few years ago, the situation really has changed um, both globally and also within countries. The TA in these areas has primarily centered around consultants and, and as we mentioned, training workshops. This is going to be a recurring theme. Um, again, that interest in subnational scorecard translation um, really did come through in most of the countries. Um, and that really reflects a push towards really localized monitoring and a real need um, and an acknowledgement that there are real differences between subnational areas within countries and real pockets of, of local, um, local responses needed. Um, sustainable financing and resource mobilization was also a theme that was that came up. And so formulating and executing sustainable financing plans was identified as one of those critical needs, particularly. Um, with consultants and budget planning um, and suggest, suggesting prioritization of financial planning to support, to support sustainable HIV prevention. There, was, um, there is a large push um, domestically and globally around prevention, um, around sustainability. And of course, we cannot forget prevention within those sustainability discussions. And many countries are really looking at this within the context of their, their, whole, their whole response. There is an emphasis on um, capacity building for community organizations with an interest, particularly here, around South-South exchanges to enable that peer learning and regional expertise sharing. This was really interesting that particularly for this technical assistance need, so that that South-South exchange was really identified by a number of countries as being some of the more useful types of TA. Um, but of course, you know, uh, training and workshops consultants also um, featured in um, underscoring that focus on enhancing local implementation capacity. And I think this is the final slide which is around legal and regulatory needs for new prevention technologies. So there is um, a demand for training on regulatory approval processes and other things related to regulation and approvals, um, as well as legal reform strategies for HIV prevention. And this underscores the importance of navigating policy frameworks for effective prevention technology rollout. And this is particularly important in the context of new technologies for prevention testing, including long-acting PrEP. Many of the countries included in the, um, who responded to the survey are either um, already rolling out long-acting PrEP like cabotegravir or are planning on, on doing this. And of course, HIV self-testing is also accelerating. So these are two critical areas, but are not the only ones related to this. Um, there is also a high interest in monitoring and evaluation and really supporting this to be integrated with services, showing a broad in interest in strengthening that feedback loop. 
And there is a strong demand, of course, around in how to do this around consultants and workshops, which makes a lot of sense given that type. But it really emphasizes the need for strategic and practical m and training. Now, not featured in this, the graphs that I showed were things um, that were identified only by a few countries. And so these additional areas for, for technical assistance requested by countries included things like support with prevention, uh, self-assessment tools, so the PSATs that Lysias had mentioned, other things like social contracting and hot topics like community-led monitoring. Oops, sorry, one slide back. Um, and so in conclusion, really, by understanding these needs and you know, spanning everything from data analysis and strategic target setting through to community capacity building, sustainable financing, we can very much better align our technical assistance needs and, man and really maximize that impact. Um, and the results re really revealed not only high demand um, areas, but also some of that preferred modality of support that I emphasized giving some clear direction for effectively mobilizing resources and expertise across HIV prevention landscapes. And so these needs for support um, and the modalities need to really feature in, in the available technical support opportunities that we have available, not only through UNAIDS and supported by UNAIDS, but also more broadly. Um, and over... And with that, I am going to hand back over to Lysias. Thank you, Heather Murray, um, for, for that overview and synthesis of the roadmap um, action survey results around TA uh, needs um, uh, indicated by, by, by countries in, in response to this to the survey. Um, so yes, let's um let's discuss um and we are happy to answer, and the panel is happy to answer any questions or clarifications you might have around uh, these findings from the scorecard, the results of the survey um, in the next few minutes remaining in this uh, in this call. I saw there was one question um, around prep target setting that that um, uh, that came um, in the Q and A. Um, I just pasted there um, a short response, and and also our prep focal person here, Heather Marie. Um, uh, feel free to to add as well. Uh, what I said uh, in response to the question is there are various tools that could be that can be used or that are used in terms of uh, setting targets for for prep um, and uh, uh, relating to how do you get the size of the population to consider uh, for prep target setting. So there are tools. Uh, for example, we have got the UNAIDS prep tools that help you quantify how many of the five key populations are. It's substantial risk of acquiring HIV that you can consider for uh, setting PrEP targets. And in terms of the percentage coverage, you may then go to the global AIDS targets that are very detailed because they provide you what are the coverage targets required for each intervention at different levels of, of, of risk, be it instance or, 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 or other risk. And then we've got um, uh, the SHIP2, uh, which is a tool that helps you to quantify also um, um, uh, young women and girls and adolescent boys and men at different uh, for different risk categories. It helps you to quantify by district how many they are. And you can take that number and also use it to, to for, for setting PrEP targets based on what coverage that you need. And then those numbers that you get of these people, be it adolescent girls and young women, be it uh, men and boys, be it um, uh, the different five key populations at substantial risk of acquiring HIV, when you've got those numbers and you know what are the coverage targets based on the global AIDS strategy uh, tables of, of, of targets, you can then use the, the PrEP2 to then set the actual targets using different assumptions for the for PrEP programming which then helps you to provide some outputs around impact, cost effectiveness, and some projections. Uh, so those are some of the key key tools that are that are there. Other regions also use their own specific. I know in, in Latin America and the Caribbean, they've got um, different um, uh, PrEP uh, target setting too. Um, other countries also in South Africa, they also use um, 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 uh, their tool for setting targets even at this facility level. Um, I, um, they even go very, very granular, but the assumptions are more or less the same thing. You quantify the number at substantial risk using these different tools. And then based on coverage you want to, to reach, you then calculate how many numbers you want to reach based on that coverage and use the, the PREPI tool to do some um, calculations and estimations and projections. 
Um, um, if you've got any further clarifying questions, um, um, uh, Jennifer, feel free to speak. Um, uh, in the next few minutes, we can unmute um, everyone and then you can speak here. So there is a question, um, Heather Marie, maybe you may want to take this one, it's saying how is the TA going to be realized and by when so that we start improving performance prior to the next survey? So it's a question I think relating to this synthesis of the TA. I'm not sure which country it is. Um, Gabriel, would you like to indicate, uh, you, we can unmute you and then you can speak if you can um, ask this question on the mic, uh, because it would be good based also on the other planned activities here uh, to know maybe which country, and then it might help to, to provide a very specific answer to you, yeah. I have unmuted you if you... Hello, hello? Yes, yeah. Yeah, this is Gabriel Atilio from South Sudan. Are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Thanks, uh, thanks, Gabriel. Yeah, hey, yeah, we are, we we are actually very interesting of because we have couple of uh, uh, gaps. We need to implement them uh, more, especially at the granular level. That's why we uh, we have uh, so many TAs uh, actually across the 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 indicators that we are given, so that we will be able to start now improving on, on some of our, our interventions and to improve on performance. So that's why I asked that question. Over, thank you. Thank you, sir. I think to stop, these aren't specific TA requests that have been put in, um, just to clarify, these are to give us an idea around the sorts of activities that um, should be implemented and should be prioritized. So when it comes to putting in um, TA requests, there are mechanisms like the TSM, um, there are mechanisms including TADG, so the demand, technical assistance demand generation for prevention. But what this also helps us do is within the GPC countries is also to look at specific activities um, on individual country levels and um, regional or global activities that can be helpful um, to implement on that broader scale um, to provide TA for multiple countries. So we are going to have a look at these um, in order to, to plan some of those activities through the GPC. But absolutely um, also include those in your other forms of TA requests that are um, and that, that need to be to be done. So I mean, hopefully, I know that my sound was also a bit odd before, so hopefully the sound is okay now. Thank you, Heather Marie, and yeah, it was more clearer with the, without an echo um, uh, this time. Um, the other question um, uh, was from uh, Patricia, um, asking if they can have the TA need survey disaggregated by country so that uh, the GPC focal points can plan uh, their TA uh, strategy. And yeah, absolutely, um, we have that by country. Uh, of course, we sort of give a bigger picture, but we know which country said what in the survey in terms of TA. So um, be more than happy to share. When we share the slides, we'll, we'll, we'll include um, that analysis by country. Yeah. Any further questions? If you'd like to speak, any comments, any feedback, feel free to raise your hand and then we can unmute you to, to ask on the mic. Okay, um, silence means everyone is okay. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for, I think we can we can close early um, on a count of one to three. If I don't see any hand, we can um, close the webinar. Okay, 
So yes, thank you so much. Really appreciate you taking time to join the webinar and to discuss findings of um, um, uh, uh, coming up with the updated scorecards and also findings from uh, the survey uh, responses submitted by countries to the GPC Secretariat. As I highlighted um, at the beginning, uh, we have been recording this. We are going to share um, the slide decks. We we'll also share the recording. Uh, feel free to share with your colleagues who might have missed um, uh, uh, this webinar. Um, anyone is part of your prevention technical group, it would be good um, uh, for everyone to, to see what is coming out of um, our countries in terms of the roadmap survey and also in terms of the data um, in the scorecards. We will also share the actual scorecard uh, scorecard two, which um, um, I can, um, uh, let me show you how, since we've got like a few minutes, I wanna show you how this two looks like so that when you get it, it's easy for you to be able to uh, to navigate it. It's basically an Excel file. The scorecard two is an Excel file that helps you to um, select different countries and or your country. And it helps you in terms of um, seeing where prevention or how prevention is, 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 is going. Um, Okay. At times when we say the scorecard two, at times it, it's hard to, 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 to visualize how it looks like. So this is basically the two, it's an Excel file basically with all the information arranged here into different um, epidemics. So mixed epidemics are uh, indicated by M and quantitative epidemics by C. Uh, we have the visualization a scorecard, which I showed you in one of the slides, a snapshot of a, a scorecard showing for uh, for Zimbabwe. And then a uh, poster, uh, I showed an example of a poster, I think, uh, for, for Diara Congo. Um, and then we've got the bigger picture summary that Clemens presented in his presentation. And we have that arranged by either mixed epidemic or considered epidemic because the layout is, is different based on the relevant HIV prevention pillars there. And then we've got a sheet that shows you by specific uh, pillar here, condom programming, young men and girls, men and boys, key populations, and by their disaggregations and also ARV-based prevention where you find PrEP. The good thing is the scorecard is very accessible. You can click at the top here. If you, Can you see my screen? If you, yes, click at, yes. yeah, if, if you click here, you can select your language of preference. If you click on French, it, it populates the, the whole file into and translate it into, into, into French. So um, language wise, um, we feel it's, it's very accessible for people speaking different languages. And then the different sheets uh, that are highlighted here, including other ones um, are shown here in these different sheets with the different color codes here. Um, if you go to scorecard, you can click any country where it's written Zimbabwe here, you put your case there. If you click, you can select any country that is from a mixed epidemic and then it populates the data. The completeness of this here, this, this scorecard, it depends on how complete that country is reporting to GAM. So where you see pink colors, it means that there are data, data gaps there. Um, um, if you go to the poster, again, similar visualization, you go to the top here, you can select your country. Uh, so for poster M, it's those countries in mixed epidemic, you can select any country here. If you select it, it populates um, um, uh, the data here. As I highlighted when I was presenting in this in the PowerPoints, um, this is the layout, new infections, prevalence is there, uh, policy related indicators. We also have got the roadmap actions they've been put into this. So it compares over time, the baseline survey results and the 24 survey results, you can see improvements that are happening. And then I've got the staked bar analysis also put into this analysis to have all your prevention um, discussions here in, in one place um, 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 and the different HIV prevention pillars with these visualizations in one place. So it's a very good visual to just in a snapshot, to have an idea of whether things are going well or things are not going well. And then you can then take time to then go into detail into the specifics to see where the gaps could be. Uh, the summary, this is what uh, Clements presented earlier on. It's now putting all the prevention pillars into one place and calculating some scores and showing by color coding whether that pillar is doing well or it's not doing well based on that scoring. And you can select different groupings here. So for example, if you're interested in, in SADAC, you can just click here, select SADAC. It populates only SADAC countries. If you're interested in WCA countries, you do the same. It populates only WCA um, our countries. This is good for comparison uh, with your neighbors um, if you want to learn uh, something. For example, if Angola feels we are not doing well on PrEP, 
they can go to Kenya and see Kenya is doing very well on PrEP. And then maybe there could be a South-South exchange that can be done. And then the pillar-specific sheets, which are a GYW, Clemens is already presented on this one, condoms, men and boys, key populations, ARV-based prevention. Um, and then the roadmap survey results, the baseline, uh, which I showed you again, and then the follow-up survey, which I showed you again in the chart that I presented earlier on. And then the policy and structural uh, that Clemens already presented, uh, you can choose to, to view them according to region or any grouping of the countries. You just click here and then you select the grouping that you want and then it populates only those countries from that region. And then some already made charts um, uh, in terms of changing new infections. So um, if you are going to do a, a, a presentation during your prevention technical group meeting for reviews, it just wants to see how many countries in my region um, I've got changing new HIV infections uh, from 2010 to 2023. And for what age groups, or ages, or, or adults, or adolescent girls and young women, or children 10 to, to 14, um, you, um, 0 to 14, I mean, you can just come here and, and, and you select, and then it populates data from those. And then the chart is already made in a way that you just copy and paste in your, in your PowerPoint um, uh, presentation. The rest are, are all the different uh, data sources where we pull this data. And some of them, we left them here open um, um, so that you can access other charts. For example, when it comes to PrEP, the charts that Clemens was presenting, if you scroll down, you'll find those charts already here. So you can just copy and paste into your presentations and you can uh, do your prevention review discussion. So this is the, the scorecard too. What we are working on now to make it even more accessible is we are making it into a digital format that will be embedded on the GPC website or the GPC information hub. That way, anyone, anywhere, anytime, uh, can be able to access the tool, be able to look at the tool, the different filtering and different visualizations as you as you prefer. So that's what I wanted to say in the in the in the remaining uh, few minutes. I'm not sure if Dr. Ford, I see there online. I think it's going for another meeting. Otherwise, thank you so much for 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 joining. I want to thank our IT and interpreters. Really, really excellent job for a smooth running. Um, uh, webinar. Thank you so much for setting this up and for making sure that everything runs uh, 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 smoothly. And to our panel um, um, for 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 preparing all these um, slides and 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 content to to share with you with you all and everyone who joined um, um, this um, this call. Uh, feel free to forward the presentations to your to your colleagues as well as to our consultants Godfrey Musuka and and Innocent Chingombe. Thank you, thank you so much for working with us on this. Um, our scorecards really uh, great and and excellent work uh, to have this this done. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's the end of our webinar. Thank you. Thank you.